If you want to find out how my hysterectomy made it so my eating habits change, keep watching. Well, I did say that I would start showing you more of my life. So anything could be going on. So if you are interested in that part of my world, then my videos will upload on Sunday. So my fashion how-to style videos will be Saturday and my vlog videos will be Sunday. So today's topic, and like I said, this is just the introductory. So this is this, this, this is just the introductory. So therefore, this is gonna be more on me and you talking. So when I got my partial hysterectomy, so a partial hysterectomy, of course, is when you get your uterus and your tubes taken out. When I got that done, every since I got out the hospital from that, and it has been 13 years, Ever since then, I cannot eat the same. So let me break it down on what I am. So I am a pescatarian, if you want to put a label. So I have been a pescatarian for 22 years. So I was a pescatarian way before I got my hysterectomy. When I got my hysterectomy, I, I don't know if other women feel this way, but I cannot eat a lot of food. Now, I'm not no little person, and I'm not no big person, but, and I have been much smaller, and since the, uh, since the pandemic, I have had, I have gained a pros, approximately 18 pounds, which is almost 20. That is a big difference, a big difference in your appearance, in the way you feel, everything. So that it doesn't mean that you can't gain weight just because you can't eat a lot of food. That is the first myth that I have found out. Now I can only talk for me, but that is the first myth I has I have found out is not true. Okay? So I'm a snacker when I'm bored. So imagine me sitting at home, working from home, you sitting at a desk all day. And of course, food is readily there. So I became a snacker. I stopped going to the gym and my weight, I don't know about you, but my weight sticks to me like glue. I can gain weight very quickly. I can't lose it quickly, but I can definitely gain it quickly. So when I eat the wrong thing, I was drinking me a bottle of wine on the weekend and I was drinking more than I ever drunk before because you know, you just feel like you chilling cause you at home and next thing I know I'm drinking a bottle of wine every weekend or, um, or even other like drinks. So I still drink plenty of water. I don't drink sodas, that hasn't changed. I didn't start eating meat, that hasn't changed. But some things stick to people's body. So I had to learn, I have learned that it's sugar. For me, sugar makes me gain weight. So let's talk about the hysterectomy, hysterectomy problems I've had. So what happens is, if I eat a lot of food and I get full, it takes forever for my stomach or my body to digest it. I can actually feel, and I know people gonna be like, that doesn't make sense, I don't understand that. I can actually feel the food moving through my intestines. I never could feel that until I had my hysterectomy. I can feel the food. I have to take something. I do not have a normal metabolism going to the bathroom. I don't have, it's not normal for me. I have to do extra. And so it's some foods I can't eat. So if I eat it, it takes longer to digest. Like if I eat some, you know how you go and you eat some chips and salsa. Well, if I eat those chips, because of the corn in the chips, 
It takes me so long to get that out my stomach. If I eat, um, so say I eat something like I love my salmon and my tuna. So if I eat that, it's great. It's great protein and it fills you up. Well, it fills me up to where if I eat it, I have to eat such a little bit of it or I will feel it. So eat, no matter, even if I ate um, a half of, you know how you can have some salmon about that being it. I half it and eat it. That salmon, once it's full in my stomach, once it's in there, I, it takes forever. I can go a whole full day without eating because I still feel full. So that means my I'm not digesting it. Now, I've learned what to eat and what not to eat. So I don't eat a lot of things that can give me indigestion. I still eat pretty healthy. I was just snacking all the time. I always tell everybody. The sugar for me is what puts the fat on my body. If I don't work out, even though I am this month, I will be 58 years old. If I don't work out and and eat and take away the sugar all together, sweets, all that, I will continue to gain weight. So you will see as I progress with my eating habits and I progress, I've stopped drinking the wine. So I haven't had wine and this will make my third weekend. I go by weekends. That's how you know you drink, honey. That's how you know what you be doing. I have to go by the weekends, not the days. So this will be the third weekend I haven't had any, any wine. I haven't drunk any, any drinks. And, you, and I've started drinking my coffee. I have started having it with no sugar. And I do the non-dairy creamer. I had to cut out uh, Starbucks coffee because I was drinking a lot of that. All that sugar, I had to cut it out. So I have started to limit my sugar intake and in going to the gym. So you will see my progression. I am going to tell you things that I eat daily. I'm going to show you, tell you whether I had anything sweet for that week. And I will share things that I eat. Now, I am nowhere near nobody's shelf. I am not going to be in my kitchen showing you beautiful scenes of me cooking the food and you got beautiful it's all pretty i'm not doing none of that but i will share what i cooked i will let you see my plate and sometimes i will let you see me cooking it and i will tell you what i ate because i have decided to become a side dish eater <laughs> you thought i was gonna say a side chick i have become a side dish eater that's what i eat now, I know you're saying, why don't you just say you eat vegetables? Well, because to me, I have it in my head that a side dish could be, I, I can eat, like when I go to a restaurant, I will eat a salad and lettuce and broccoli and all that is another thing that fills me up and takes a long time for me to digest even though I'm going to continue eating it because it's healthy for me and you got to have your vegetables. I just can't eat a lot of it. So <clears throat> you will see the progression all up in my face. You're going to see it in my arms. So you're going to see how me not doing sugar drinking or um, I'm even cutting out all, even the seafood. So I am only and the reason why I'm cutting it out is because it I can't digest it. It it stays on, it stays in my stomach, and I can feel it. And like I have to make myself eat. So I have to have a routine of helping myself because I don't want to go get a whole lot of medication. So I know that losing the weight will help me um, because the more weight I gain. The more my knees hurt, so I can't do exercises like I want to, not all of them. And the more weight I gain, the faster I get tired. 
So what I'm doing is I am changing my healthy eating habit. Yes, I eat healthy. In the long run, I eat healthy. Even though I snack, I eat healthy. So even though I was already eating healthy, it still messes with my digestive system. And it was not like that before my hysterectomy. Before my hysterectomy, I was even bigger. Before my hysterectomy, I was, I could eat what I wanted to. I could eat me a nice big old salad, put some tuna. I, Cause I don't forget before 22 years prior to that, I was eating meat and I still didn't have problems. But after my hysterectomy, I can feel it going through my diet. I can feel it going through my intestines. So that is one of the reasons why I say it affects how I eat. It's affecting how I can digest. And the older I get, the worse it's getting. So what I decided to do is I'm going to make sure that the, the side dishes that I do eat is healthy. Because you can say side dishes and eat a, a whole bunch of loaded potato a whole a loaded potato full of cheese sour cream and all that or you can eat loaded fries that's not healthy for you it's a side dish though it's not a what we call a meat but for me a side dish can fill me up and when i was a vegan when i was vegan a vegan when i was vegan and i did that for six months but i was consistently working out and i was a vegan i got the smallest i've ever been but the thing is this we can try all you can do is try to live the lifestyle that you can keep being consistent with stick with that so i did it for six months and as soon as i went i, I remember the day i went on a cruise and i wanted to try the smoked salmon and um I wanted to uh, I wanted to try the smoked salmon with the cream cheese because I love smoked salmon um, with cream cheese, but I don't eat the bagel. I just eat the salmon with the cream cheese. And after that, I was eating. I was eating everything on that ship that was um, like eggs in the morning. And I just the vegan part just left me. So you can be a healthy eater gain weight and you still can be a healthy eater and be a snacker eat sweets drink wine drink liquor all of that affects your weight so unless you stick to to actually consistently eating healthy and take away all the sweets i know i did it take away all the sweets but the thing is you have to know what affects your body it's what affects you. And when everybody used to tell me when I became a vegan, you getting too skinny, you getting too skinny. And I, at first I hated the fact that I was too overweight. And then I was like, maybe I'm too skinny. Maybe these people are right. We have got to stop listening to other people. How do you feel? What do you want? What makes you feel good? And what makes me feel good is not putting... And I've seen people eat plates of food. I'm talking about thick plates of food. I cannot go nowhere near that. A lot of people think I eat very little. They be like, you, that's not healthy. You're not eating enough. I'm sorry. I'm going to stop listening to people. As long as I'm not out here uh, and I'm looking um, anorexic or and nothing to get, you know, people need help. I'm not uh, up here to... Uh, talk about anyone that's not what i'm up here to do sorry my phone is ringing okay so that's not what i'm up here to do what i'm saying is you can tell when someone is not eating at all i felt the best i ever felt when i let my body when i ate something and i felt uh, I would eat a little bit at a time and never enough to make me full 
during the day and exercising five days a week. That was the only time I felt good. So I know what to do and you know what to do. Has nothing to do with society. Has nothing to do with anybody else telling you what to do. You know what to do with your body. So I know what to do to get back to where I was, where it was a healthy weight for me. I ain't saying I want to be the smallest I ever been. I may never get back there. I want to be the healthiest. I want to feel good. I want to feel good. So when I once I got my hysterectomy. That was one of the things that changed. I was like, why do I feel my food moving? And I thought I was going crazy. I was like, why do I feel my food moving? I mean, I feel it from the time I eat it until the time it goes through my intestines. I can feel the, the movement. And I was wondering, do anybody else feel that way? Anybody else who, who's had a hysterectomy, did they do something to my intestines? It's no, I'm not saying that it's a, I'm in pain. I'm not saying any of that. I get full faster and I can just feel it in my stomach. So I refuse to go into my 60s feeling this way. I'm not. And I'm quite sure anybody going in your 20s, your 30s, your 40s, your 50s, I refuse to go into my 60s feeling this way. So you might be thinking, okay, so <clears throat> what do you eat then? Well, I eat a lot of side dishes, so I intimate fast. If you don't do anything else, that is something great for you to try. Now, of course, if you take any kind of medication and you have to eat to take your medication and you have to take your medication in the morning or you know during the day intimate fast at night we got this thing where you got to have breakfast at this time lunch at this time dinner full full pledge meal at this time you don't your fullest meal could be in the morning your fullest meal can be at lunch your intimate fasting does not have to be in the morning so i do not take medication so i intimate fast until um, two o'clock the next day. So let me tell you what I do. I eat, the latest time I eat is, I'm talking the latest, I mean seriously latest. The latest time I eat is seven o'clock. The earliest time I eat is five. I intimate fast, I'm talking about any type of, if I'm gonna eat dinner or my fullest meal. My fullest meal, is no later than five o'clock. The only time I will eat something as late as seven is if I go out to dinner with folks and you know, somebody say, let's go out to dinner. A lot of people eat dinner between six and seven and we go out. And then I'm gonna still bring food home. I can guarantee you that. Cause if I overstuff myself, I feel even worse. So what I do is I intermittent fast and how I can intermittent fast is the fact that don't forget the later I eat in the evening and my latest, even if my meal is five o'clock, I'm eating. One thing about vegetables, vegetables can fill you up. You can eat vegetables and it will still fill you up. Now for me, it can fill me up. So the last meal, and then I might have something later on in uh, at night. I may get something like uh, a banana. A banana goes through my system oh, good. I can eat a banana. But if I eat an apple and like some peanut butter, that takes a long time for me to digest. So I will eat a banana or I will eat some applesauce, something like that. I get the unsweetened. Uh, granny apple applesauce from Mott's. So I'm gonna start showing you things that I eat that helps me if you have that digestive problem like me. I will tell you some of the things I eat. I'm not saying that it will help you, but 
I hope it helps somebody. But if you want to go on my journey with me and you want to know the things I eat, this I will share it with you. So I will eat something like that. And in the morning when I get up, I will get my cup of coffee and I will drink water. And the good thing is I be training all day. So I will drink water all the way up until um, two o'clock. And then at two o'clock, I will have like um, that. I might eat me if I didn't eat a banana that night before. I might eat me a piece of fruit, and I will eat me a. Um, there's some yogurt that is keto yogurt, because I don't also don't want to eat a lot of dairy at all. Matter of fact, I eat some cheese, and I'll talk about the cheese that I eat at another time. But I eat that keto yogurt and believe it or not, because I've been drinking water all day or I've been drinking tea, um, my body is still digesting the food that I ate the night before. I am still, I am not hungry at all. So by the time I'm ready to eat dinner, I have digested all that food enough to go and eat something. So I will talk to you about the type of food I eat and I will talk to you more about intermittent fasting. Let me know if you intermittent fast and cause some people intermittent fast, um, they will eat at six and won't eat no more again until like eight o'clock or six o'clock the next day. For me, that I, that's not enough time for my meal to digest through my system. It's just not enough time. And nothing about me looks unhealthy. Nothing. I can still get in the gym. I can still get on the treadmill. It's just that the weight makes it harder and it's harder on my knees. So, but the more my weight goes off, now that I'm not eating all the sugary sweets, now that I'm not drinking the wine, now that I'm not drinking the liquor, my weight that's the one thing i can say about my body my body reacts to what i do to it so if i work out consistently and i eat right consistently my body will show it that's one thing i can say so when people say i just can't do it my body not changing that's because something is not working correctly Either your eating habits haven't changed or either you're not exercising enough. And I never be in the gym more than 45 minutes. Even when I lost all that weight, when I lost, I will talk about that weight loss journey. I used 5'3 with 200 pounds of weight on you. I want to be, to me, I was my healthiest when I was 155. I am fine with that. Sure is. The smallest I've ever been in my life was 135. I'm talking about in adulthood. I would never get back to 135. I can never see, I would. I don't even think my body can do that. 155 is perfect for me. I felt, I felt happier then. I felt good about myself. I looked good in my clothes to me and I felt healthy. You can feel it. You can feel it. Feel it when you're healthy. You felt that difference. I know you have. You can feel it. So I just have to get back to there. And I'm going to slowly get back there. I give myself to my 60th birthday to get back to that 155. That's almost two years. I'm about to be 58. That's the whole this whole year and another whole year to for me to get back to 155. I'm quite sure I could probably do it way before then, but I am not rushing myself, but I am taking mental note of everything that I'm doing to harm myself. I'm not saying I would never ever ever have another glass of wine, but I'm trying to go the first 30 days without it. And if I have a glass of wine, it will not be at my house. I do not to want to drink at home. When I drink at home, I drink more. And it's putting the weight on me because of the sugar. Wine, no matter what you say, no matter what you think, wine is full of sugar. 
and that sugar is harmful for me. It might not mess with nobody else. You got a high metabolism. By the time you drink that wine, you done burnt it off by walking from the couch to the refrigerator. It takes me a minute. I've learned my body. I know what it is. And once Covina then started and she hit us and I'm sitting at home, I sat there and watched myself get bigger. And I don't like it. And then I'm eating stuff that I know takes forever for me to digest. And I'm having, I'm feeling full all the time. I'm feeling miserable. I feel like I just got so much in my body. I did not feel that way when I was going to work every day. I was going to the gym. I had a routine down pat. I was, my weight, I went from, I'm, I love my 150s. I got down to 148 and was like, what is happening? And I wasn't trying to lose weight. I wasn't on no diet. I was just eating right and exercising. That was all I was doing. So I don't know if you've ever felt this way about once you had a, if you ever is had a, if you ever had a hysterectomy, please tell me below if it affected you. And then some people I know it affects them because they know they can't have any more children. Thank God I had mine when I had three and I won't plan on having no more anyway. So that was a blessing because I didn't need another one. So that hysterectomy changed my body on the inside. I didn't, um, it physically, as far as any like physical symptoms, I didn't recognize that I had this symptom until maybe um, about three months after, because at first I thought it was just, you know, my body has to heal. Like they said, I had major surgery. Your body has to heal on the inside. They were all up in there. Your body got to heal. So anything that was happening, I thought it was the healing process. But the more the years went on, I'm like, wait a minute. And when I talked to my doctor about it, they are like, okay, well, are you in any pain? Is it doing anything? I'm like, no, I just get full faster and I can feel the food moving. I can feel it in my stomach. I can feel it. And we all know it's not in your stomach, it's in your intestines. I can feel it moving. And all they ever said was, as long as there's no pain, no bleeding, no anything like that, it's just your body. And I was like, y'all did something to me. Y'all did something to my body. Y'all took a part of my intestine or something, something missing or something happened. But join me. So guys, don't forget every Sunday I'll come up here and I will do a, I will show you more meals. I will show you what I'm eating. I will show you uh, what I do with water when I'm tired of just drinking water, how I spruce it up. I don't want to be spending no whole lot of money. So if you're interested in a broke girl style, eating okay i ain't got no fancy money i ain't got no money i mean i ain't making no fancy place i don't have no whole lot of money but i would do just normal stuff to eat and i like to put my own take on it so if you're interested in more about me more about my life more about me going out more about me going to restaurants going to movies going to going traveling then those videos will be on sundays and I hope you join me. So like and subscribe. And I will see you on Saturdays when I do all of my styling videos. So don't forget those. So hit the bell so that you can get notified. And know that if you don't want to look at the styling videos. That you want to look at the vlogs. Then those will be on Sunday. Okay. Thank you my butterflies. And for those who are not a butterfly. Please join me and give this video a like.